Welcome back to my channel guys, my name is Tomer. I want to ask you to answer this right now. If you've been following OnePlus, what is your perception of them? Do you think they're dying? Do you think they're doing well? Where do you think they're going with their next phone? OnePlus was one of my favorite smartphone companies. They were the underdog that was easy to root for. And now it seems like they've been slowing down over the past few years. They've done a lot of good, a whole lot of bad, some ugly, but here's why I think they might be on the brink of coming back from the dead. This is the story of OnePlus. And if you want to keep my channel alive, please go ahead and like the video, drop a sub, and hit that bell. As we know, in recent days, the merger between OnePlus and Oppo is becoming a lot more apparent and public. They've recently told us on the ninth anniversary that they're going into a dual brand strategy, which will see OnePlus as the pioneer brand for flagship smartphones. Now, I'm gonna try to examine this more throughout the video, but to better understand OnePlus, let's first look back to how they first started. Picture yourself back in 2013. You've been through the Blu-ray department. You've been head of marketing with one notable team member under your lead. You've even been working as the, the vice, vice president. president of this company. Oppo. Hello, your name is Pete Lau. You decide to leave Oppo with that one marketing team member. That's Carl Pei, by the way. Form a small company called OnePlus and start working with a small team. Oh wow, just five. A very small team. To create the phone of dreams. The OnePlus One was an enthusiast dream. They built the phone using fairly high-end parts, cutting corners only where they thought necessary. Ran with an OS called Cyanogen, an enthusiast favorite open source operating system. OnePlus was not going to settle. And then, to many people, they did. It's been painful for me watching their slow descent into me. They aren't as focused the as they once were with this one hard hitting one phone per year to slay the giants. Plague. OnePlus never died per se. The company's actually been doing reportedly quite well for themselves in recent years. No, the way they died was in what the company represented for many people. What the company meant for the consumer. What happened to never settle? For one, like MKBHD said, OnePlus felt less focused. They came out with different regional variants, the base models, the pro models, the T, the Nord. It's possible that with the expansion of the company, they lost their edge, partly because they were less able to focus on delivering premium performance and bug-free software across so many different phone models. The phones became riddled with bugs. The company had data breaches. They made moves like the switch towards merging with ColorOS, becoming more a part of Oppo. Having one of their co-founders, Carl Pei, leave the company. All of these things built up to break the trust that many consumers had with the company. Meanwhile, their main flagship line, the Pro models, didn't quite compete with other flagships in many ways. They were no longer the budget king, nor the gaming king, they've never quite been the smartphone camera king, and they could no longer be labeled as flagship killers. While the pros had the price of a flagship phone, many felt the camera still underperformed. Looking again to MKBHD, who hosted several smartphone camera comparison tests, phones that were actually budget friendly such as the Google Pixel 6a won the competition, blindly, two years in a row. What does this say for OnePlus? What does this say for Apple? What does this say for all of these other companies competing to be the best? Not to mention, Google actually still does have that near stock Android experience. And we know that these smartphone cameras are mostly down to software tuning, but then what is going on with OnePlus, who is now backed by Hasselblad, a famous camera and lens company? All of this adds up to basically have OnePlus 
being replaced in their one main role that they were supposed to fill in the market. Plus, OnePlus for some reason decided to take off the alert slider on the 10T. I feel like they were just stacking L's at this point. Like there was not really any reasonable point. Hopefully that sort of decision never gets made again and OnePlus has learned from their mistake. So could OnePlus be coming back as strongly as their alert slider? The Cloud 11 event will be officially releasing the new phone to the global market. Here's why I'm expecting this phone to be a hit. OnePlus seems to be cleaning up their lineup this time around, at least as far as we know. The OnePlus 11 will be their flagship spec device and there will not be a pro variant this year. Their move in with Oppo will see the bigger company investing 10 billion won, about 1.5 billion USD, into OnePlus over the next three years. They're going to go for what they claim as a zero net profit margin, keeping the quality high but the price low. We can already see improvements in the direction of OnePlus by looking at what we know about the 11. Back with Hasselblad once again, this new phone will feature a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 32 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 48 megapixel ultra wide. In addition to this, it's going to have a 12 megapixel selfie sensor and have up to 4K video recording on there. And of course, up to 8K on the back. This phone should have a 5000 milliamp hour battery and a 100 watt charger that they seem to be including in the box, or at least they will include some fast charger in the box, although it will not have wireless charging. This phone will definitely perform well using Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But one of the biggest and possibly most exciting feature of this phone is the price. We know from looking at the Chinese version that it'll come in around $500 to $600 at the base model, going up to around $700 plus with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So what does this mean? Why does this really matter? Basically, it feels like OnePlus is digging back into their roots, trying to focus on delivering the quality and performance that many consumers have been wanting and asking for, while keeping a lot of the identities that makes OnePlus OnePlus. Now, they're still going to have that color OS slash oxygen OS mix, and that's probably going to be here to stay. They do stick to a lower number of models per year, like it seems like they might, then it should be easier for them to keep up with the different versions. To further cement this as being the case, OnePlus has decided to offer four OS updates and five years of regular patches for basically all of their flagships from 2023 onward. So here we have OnePlus really trying to prove themselves, really showing us that they're committed to never settling, even though they might have to cut a few corners like always. I really do think that the OnePlus 11 could be a big phone for OnePlus. I think it'll reignite the flame in many enthusiast hearts while still appealing to the masses. I'd love to see what else the Cloud 11 event has to offer, and I will be trying to attend the OnePlus 11 pop-up in New York City. So let's see together if OnePlus really is going to be back from the dead in the way that I think they are, or if they're going to continue to just go down the path of Oppo. Anyways, that's it from me. If you want to see my thoughts on the Google Pixel Fold, you can go ahead and click this video. And aside from that, I'll see you guys later.